Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Liam Healy. Liam is a, a senior vice president and managing director at Diligent. Diligent is the market leading board portal, allowing unparalleled board uh, management with simplicity in functionality to mitigate risk and enable effective governance. Recently, Diligent launched uh, Diligent Compliance to help organizations confidently manage risk and ensure business continuity during uncertain times. Liam, thank you for taking your time and coming to our interview today. Thanks for having me, Boris. Uh, Liam, could you tell us a short story about Diligent? What are you up to these days? Uh, sure, and thanks uh, for having me. Um, we're excited to, to share a bit of our story and some of what we're doing within Diligent. Um, you know, for those not familiar, uh, Diligent uh, is a global organization, uh, over 17,000 customers, uh, worldwide, uh, north of 650,000 directors uh, and governance professionals that use our products. Uh, and, you know, at its core, we're, we're just trying to help organizations modernize their governance. Uh, and what we think that means to us as an organization is uh, helping people get the right information at the right time uh, securely so that they can carry out their their uh, uh their fiduciary duties. And so as directors, that might be asking the best questions in, 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 in confidential meetings, including board meetings. Uh, if they're operators or officers, uh, it's making the best decisions they can with the information uh, at their disposal. And from a governance risk compliance uh, arena, uh, as you know, today, uh, today is seeing more challenges than ever. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us about the diligent compliance? Is it a special, special uh, department or is it a special tool you developed recently? It is. Uh, diligent compliance is one of the offerings uh, that sits alongside uh, many of our products. You know, Diligent Boards, our flagship product, um, uh, as well as Diligent Entities, which serves the group structure of an organization. Diligent compliance um, is our first step into the arena that allows us to help organizations manage through their obligations and the frameworks that they have around any and all compliance related uh, areas. Uh, and so whether it's business continuity uh, or organizational resilience, whether it's uh, ESG or whether it's ISO standards, um, all of those areas uh, diligent compliance can help with. And so we recently launched that to, uh, to sit alongside our other, our other core products. Okay. So, uh, could you tell us uh, how Diligent differs from other software providers operating in this space? And what are some examples of your uh, customers' use cases? Yeah, I, I think what's, um, what's unique and, and we're fortunate to have um, uh, is, is our ecosystem of directors and officers. Um, you know, over 600,000, uh, 600, 650,000 directors and, and officers, operators of governance uh, are leveraging diligence uh, products and solutions and, and the technology to help them modernize their governance. Um, and so as a, you know, we think governance is kind of unfairly sometimes lumped into risk and compliance as a leading indicator of the results of, of risk and compliance and building a, a good foundation and having the individuals that are asking the toughest questions and making the decisions for the businesses uh, using our products um, uh, is, uh, is unique. Um, and so we're, we're fortunate to have that, uh, to have that footprint. Um, you know, everything from data integrity to entity management to the obligations and frameworks, you know, ESG is a great example. Um, uh, as you mentioned, you know, some of the organizations that we work with are starting to implement a common set of uh, um, uh, standards uh, across, you know, non, uh, financial and non-financial type metrics uh, across ESG. And I know the International Business Council, um, the IBC, uh, in close uh, efforts with Ernst and & Young and, and the World Economic Forum is a great use case of taking a common set of standards um, and putting those into a, uh, an agile, lightweight technology that allows organizations to collaborate globally, uh, measure one consistent set of standards, and stay on top of the ever-changing regulatory requirements to produce an output. Um, and so, you know, for us, what's different is uh, being able to pass those outputs through 
uh, to the individuals at the top of the pyramid in many of these large, um, uh, highly regulated institutions where there are uh, outcomes favorable, um, sometimes not favorable, uh, from uh, from topics like ESG, having the directors be able to access that directly through our technology is uh, is unique. Mm -hmm. All right. So, how has COVID impacted you and your clients? And perhaps, what are your insights on how has COVID um, affected the demand for risk and compliance solutions? Um, couple. Of, uh, let me un unpack the the question. A couple of different questions there. Um, uh, the challenges that we've so, so first and foremost, um, it's impacting the world, uh, as everybody knows. So philosophically, um, you know, unprecedented times in, um, in the economy. And so not to glance over uh, the macroeconomics um, of the investment and resourcing to get more on the front foot and be proactive is just simply tougher for organizations today. Um, I think what we're finding is um, you know, for Diligent, we've been very fortunate that, you know, we both prepare and rehearse for, for I can't say these sorts of scenarios, they, you know, they come um, hopefully every one, you know, once every hundred years or longer. Um, but for, you know, unprecedented um, uh, crises, you know, we're, we're well prepared to pivot. Um, and, and so, you know, at the leadership of our CEO, Brian Stafford, uh, and his leadership team allowed us to move very quickly. So from diligence standpoint, you know, we're fortunate to continue along our, our, our mission uh, this year. Um, and that mission is really to support uh, our global customers, support others, our employees, our customers. Um, and so what we're seeing, the challenges that we're seeing is that it's just harder in a 100% uh, distributed global workforce uh, to collaborate. Um, and specifically, I know we're talking a little bit about compliance, uh, you know, with the assigned tasks and the collaboration that happen on the obligations to stay on top of whether it be internal policy or external regulatory requirements, updating those tasks and projects in real time uh, is sometimes hard when, when information very, you know, um, and very, very, very real is, is locked in filing cabinets in some cases um, and, and where you can't get to the office to get what you need to get done done. Uh, that's been the biggest challenge that we've seen our customers face. And so we've, you know, we have uh, been able to launch our products um, uh, to help them be more collaborative and, and get in and access these solutions anytime, all the time uh, and with our support. Mm -hmm. So in, in your space, uh, because I myself used to be a, a risk consultant, I have a question. What is the difference between business continuity and uh, organizational resi resilience? Is it something new, new, new kind of uh, uh, branch of uh, business continuity or is it more broader uh, perspective of looking on it? It's a, um, it's a timely and relevant question um you know and we we think through it a lot i can't say that there's one way to capture uh the differences between bcps or business continuity in general and how organizations uh organizations think through resilience plans um you know look uh, i'll speak for myself and through my lens and 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 just boiling it down uh, simply i think business continuity feels a bit static um, and then sometimes um antiquated um, you know, it's a good plan, as we all know. It's a good plan. Um, uh, it follows uh, policies for if things go wrong. Um, uh, but in contrast, uh, you know, I think on the organizational resilience side, um, it's a bit more opportunistic uh, and dynamic and focuses more on the, uh, the adaptation of, of, of people, uh, people's skills, the processes and solves for the capacity or the elasticity of an organization uh, needing to solve for when things go wrong. Um, and um, I think they're a bit different, um, albeit they, you know, there are obviously overlapping similarities. Interesting, interesting. I'd like to ask your personal opinion. <laughs> what is a commonly held belief as it relates to compliance that you are passionate to uh, disagree with? Oh, wow. Um, uh, that I personally disagree with. Uh, 
that you can be a, that you can be a hundred percent prepared. Um, I, you know, many of the organizations that I speak with think about building, you know, and many of our, our customers um, are thinking about building plans that they can rehearse and rehearse for a time when, when things are um, perfect and when things go wrong, they will have all the dominoes in a row. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big advocate of, uh, being 80% right and being flexible enough and, 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 and having a foundation that you can be agile and, and move from a plan. In fact, my father, my father always said, um, um, you, you have to have a plan. You can always change it. <laughs> um, um, and you should expect to change it. Uh, and so, no, I, I think that's, uh, you know, I think the, the big thing I look at is it's never going to be perfect. Right. So how can we be as airtight as we can, but, but embrace, embrace when things aren't going to go well. Okay. So what tips do you have for risk and compliance managers to help their organizations to stay the course during this crisis? Well, I think, uh, and actually that, that, that's a dovetail on, um, on the previous question. I think, um, you know, generically, I think investing in, be, in being prepared um, and, and being agile, right? I think, uh, you know, philosophically and, and a bit bland is, you know, plan, rehearse, update, repeat. Um, but specifically, um, you know, don't lose sight of, uh, you know, a tip that I would give just having, um, again, an, an diligence ecosystem of uh, compliance is one part of the puzzle um, and compliance covers lots of different things. But, you know, when the board is asking, when, you know, when directors are asking or when stakeholders are asking, how are we doing and, you know, fill in the blank. Um, I think in today's society specifically, what we have a line of sight to is, um, not losing sight of the security of that information. And in many cases, organizations, while, while a lot of the uh, uh, information is probably not uh, highly classified, you know, much of the information is highly classified and sensitive information to an organization. And so um, it sounds odd um, that security is at the top of concerns for organizations, but this shift to collaboration in a hundred percent distributed workforce is creating um, a stress and tension between ease of use and access of information and security. And I think the pandemic in particular has pushed that pendulum um, to, to the opposite side um, where organizations are really um, flexing to be able to access this information quickly and using mainstream tools, um, which I think is highlighting in some cases and um, in some cases catastrophically, uh, the stress that it puts on security. And right, and so now the pendulum will start to swing back towards security and control. Um, and I think just not losing sight of that when implementing, when implementing plans. All right, so uh, looking broadly uh, in your uh, industry, what are the major trends in your space and what we should expect from you guys in the in the future um the major trends i think uh i don't know if it's a trend gosh it's been, it seems like it's been talked about for for so long these days is uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning um you know i, I think you know in those cases where automation is, you know, set it and forget it, uh, as we all know, and artificial intelligence is now starting to look at, you know, or looks at um, uh, test, uh, test samples and sample groups and is able to give you the trends from what it's learning and machine learning being, you know, wow, it's gonna, it's gonna evolve along the way. You know, I think not just in compliance um, and the obligations and the standards that can be set, but you know, across all of governance, where, you know, many of the different um, data points that are driven um, are uh, replicable, they're repeatable processes in, that are in place driven by policy, which is changing every day. Um, but I think in the future, you know, near, very near future, the artificial intelligence and the machine learning, at least as we're looking at it, is going to start to take uh, the opportunity to drive human insights and human intelligence more towards the value add um, decision making versus um, spending the human intelligence time on um, what again uh, you know machines can can take care of, uh, uh, of of for us and at a speed that we can never digest 
So, you know, putting us in an opportunity as uh, individuals that drive our organizations to drive uh, insights from, from this data. Um, so I think, you know, AI and machine learning is going to advance uh, the, the world of governance very rapidly over the next few years. Um, I think the second is, uh, is, is around visualization. Um, I think organizations are very used to digesting information in dashboards. And I'll be at the Office of the General Counsel, legal, compliance, ta uh, tax, risk in, in that world um, uh, are still in the curve of adopting technology and jumping the chasm a bit. Um, I think visualization um, in a world where, you know, for example, you could look at your entire group structure not printed out on uh, eight by 11 sheets of paper, but rather on a, you know, um, a, a touch screen and you can move them around and scenario model and then in real time have artificial intelligence and or um, uh, your technology tell you what does that change based on the jurisdictions that we've moved, um, you know, our entities, for example, um, as we know, compliance and policy and regulatory requirements ultimately driven by the jurisdiction they sit in. Mm -hmm. um, doing that all real time opens up many doors for, for organizations. And, you know, one example is, you know, merger acquisition um, for, for large institutions. Um, you know, what has to change? Lots of downstream effects in, of the dominoes in those areas. So I'd say AI, machine learning, data visualization of, of, the, of the data um, is really some of the big trends that we're talking about and investing in. We, we invest uh, a lot of R&D into those uh, new and upcoming areas. Um, so I think, you know, what's, what's coming from us? What should you expect from us in the future? I think for the near future, um, uh, well, I, let me frame it in, you know, diligent, I think we think about, uh, you know, we have our mission statements and our values, but I think, you know, if I were boiling it down, one of the areas that we really think about is uh, others first and others first being employees, customers, the community, um, and how can we support, uh, how can we support them and make our investments that, that, that are being a contributor to, to each of those areas. And so in the short term, I think as we manage through the, the, the pandemic, I think the next year is just gonna be weird, right? I don't know if that's the technical term, but um, it's, you know, it's gonna be, you know, we're gonna have to ebb and flow with changes. And so I think, you know, you should expect Diligent to be um, agile and lightweight in its investments and how we make, um, uh, put others first, our employees, you know, communication transparency, our customers investing in our partnerships and, and our R&D. Um, and the community, you know, we've just developed a leadership cloud um, for for professional leaders um, that we think can draw upon compliance and, and risk and governance areas. Um, I think the second would be um, what 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 you know the world should expect from us, and specifically in this space of modern governance, is that we're solving problems. You know, we're we're coming at it from a lens of getting the right information to the right people at the right time, securely, so that they can carry out their fiduciary duties and. Um, and report on those with confidence. Um, and I think that, that the, you know, the world should expect us to continue to invest um, in, in uh, our people and our process and our products to, to get that right. Okay, fantastic. So uh, summarizing, if someone who is listening to this interview would like to walk away from it uh, with some uh, one or two major takeaways, what would it be? Uh, uh, two major takeaways, what would it be? Um, well, the first I think would be uh, secure, uh, security, managing through the, you know, I could say something really bland, like um, managing through the pandemic is hard. Um, I think that everyone gets that. Um, I, think, I think it's, as you invest in the shift to a more collaborative distributed workforce, as, 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 as our businesses are, um, don't lose sight of security. That's one. Um, um, make sure to prioritize how the collaboration of your efforts are, are, are still securely contained. Um, and, and the second, I think, would be um, make the investments up front to, to, to build the proper foundation for you to, uh, as an organization, be able to agilely move. Um, when things don't go the way that you had originally planned. So make, make, make the right investments. Um, uh, sorry, my dog wants to go out here real quick. Let me let him out of my, 
my home office. This is pandemic life for us. Um, uh, so the you can invite um, him. We had an interview with a guy with a dog. It was not very very <laughs> charming. I wish my I wish my I wish my daughter could have made an appearance. Um, no, I think I think the second piece is um, um, is. Uh, is in, in the planning, uh, you know, the investment in the investment in planning up front, mathematically putting metrics behind it, being thoughtful and intentional about the investments that go into the, the proper preparation to make investments. Um, but know that know that you know it's not going to be perfect, and you you know you've got to be agile along the way, and you've got to be able to um, you've got to be able to move um, in the moment to get the best results. And time is time is of the essence. Okay, fantastic. I think it was a great interview. And if I might uh, forgot something, do you have something to add? Uh, no, I think we covered. Uh, I think we covered. Just look through some thoughts. No, I think I think we covered everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, anything, then anything I would like more to, you would hope to get out of it or anything, anything more you would like to hear about or that you think would be valuable for the audience? Yeah, yeah, whatever. I think if we, if we covered everything, then uh, I would, uh, would like to thank you for your time, for your interview, and I wish you great success with uh, uh, growing your company. And I hope uh, to hear from you in the future. And uh, First of all, uh, create a good uh, environment for your clients and uh, good health to you and your, your uh, uh, family. Super. Thanks, Boris. I really appreciate it. Um, all the best to you and your family uh, and during the pandemic. Looking forward to, to staying connected. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.